Myrtle, good to see you. What's the last couple of weeks been like for you and for the group? Because there's been lots happening. <laughs> there has been a lot happening. It's been a very busy couple of weeks. Um, Training-wise, the boys have been excellent. Um, I think we're in a really good place in terms of preparation for the for the Queen's game this weekend. Obviously, there's a lot of moving parts uh, behind the scenes at the club with Alex coming in, um, and we're all excited about that. Um, so yeah. Like you say, Alex coming in. Have you spoken to him? What yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, spoke to him a couple of times. Um, and all really positive and, and genuinely excited about the next chapter for the Falcons. Um, I have no doubt that he'll he'll bring a, a bit of a fresh outlook into things and challenge us as coaches um, in terms of what we're doing um, to make sure we're delivering the best possible sessions we can for the lads. Uh, I know he's having conversations uh, sort of in his evenings. Obviously, he's still got his day job to do over at uh, Onyaks. Um, he's having conversations to start get things moving forward, which is which is great. He's obviously been really proactive with that. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll see what unfolds over the next couple of years. I was going to say, what, what sort of impact is he actually having over the remaining few weeks of his season? Yeah, well, we, we had a chat, and, and he's he's quite happy to start start his reign, if you like, fresh in the summer. Um, so he's, he's happy for us to crack on um, over these last few games as we have. Uh, we'll continue to take it one week at a time. Um, and our, our big focus and driver is on, on putting on performances for each other and, and for the fans. So one coming in as head coach, one leaving, retiring. Will Welsh, obviously. I mean, this is a term that's bandied round a lot, saying players are great servants to clubs. But Welsh has been a great servant to the Falcons. What has made him into one of the Falcons' all-time greats? Oh, it's, his, it's his attitude, it's his demeanour. It's just him as a bloke. I, I'm very fortunate to have known him since he was 15. We used to go and deliver sessions at, half, at uh, lunch break at RGS. Um, back in the day, and um, I think yeah, throughout his career, he obviously took on that leadership role very young, um, and he just he was took took to it like a duck to water. Um, he's been phenomenal on the pitch, uh, absolute warrior. Does a lot of the unseen work, and off the pitch, he's been fantastic in driving standards, um, setting an example for young players, um, and really taking the club forward. Um, he's, he's been through a lot of tough times himself within that, um, in terms of where we've been as a club and injury issues and stuff over the years. But, but yeah, he's. I think he's very well deserving of uh, of his rest period now and, uh, and watching the games from the from the stands. And I suppose as well, it's the fact that he's a jury boy at the end of the day, and, and the fans take local players to their hearts even more than any other player, I guess, in that sense. Yeah, they do, and we've we've seen that over the years. Uh, a homegrown player gets a, a slightly bigger round of applause when they leave when they leave the leave the pitch because there's that connection. That's that's inevitable, and, and it's always been a big thing for us as a club to have that um, and say, well, she epitomises something which which probably doesn't happen as much in professional sport now, that sort of one career at one club um, is, uh, is really, really commendable and so we're, we're very grateful and fortunate to have a, a bloke like him uh, in our company. Looking on the pitch, obviously all eyes on Quinns, how much motivation or a source of motivation is the league table currently? Um, not massively to be honest, um, as I said we focused on taking one game at a time um, and all our focus and prep has been on this game, um, obviously there's there's loads of different elements to it. Obviously, we played them here first game of the season. I think we were leading with five minutes to go and managed to pull thing away. Uh, so that, that's still on some people's minds. Um, but ultimately, we want to go and, and put in a good show, um, something that we can be proud of. Um, the boys have been really well prepped. I think Wilson's we'll put a really good defensive set ready for, for the threats that they pose. Um, and hopefully, we can go out there and really put our foot on their throats and, uh, and impose our game plan on them. Defence is always important, but I imagine it's extra important in a game between Quinns and Fultons because the two teams who are never shy of putting a few points on the board against each other. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, we're very well aware of the threat they've got. So, 8, 9, 10, 12 is a big axis for them. Um, so, we spent a lot of time looking at how we can nullify that um, but obviously they've got threats elsewhere their scrum's exceptional they've got some electric outside back so we're ready for the for the threat they'll pose the guys who haven't been in the match squad have prepared the lads really well in training as well um, which is something that quite often goes unnoticed that those guys put in a shift every week when they're, they're not getting uh, when they're not getting the jersey which is something they all strive for as well um, so yeah so I feel we're in a good place and um, the boys are resting up now um, ready for the bus journey down there tomorrow I suppose lots have been made of this win battle that's going to be taking yeah. place between Matteo and Caden Murley as well what have you made of Matteo's season because it's fair to say that he's had an impact ever since being here oh, he's, he's, a, he's a a bit like Welsh he's a brilliant bloke um, and he's, he's unbelievably talented um, and I feel this year he's managed to he's managed to express himself a little bit more um, obviously a little bit more comfortable in the surroundings a little bit more understanding of of how we play um, and how we can be effective within that and, uh, and yeah he's definitely taken his chances and um, and I guess one of our big jobs is to make sure we can keep finding the ball in a little bit of space or, or with a little bit of a mismatch in front of him. And I guess uh, potentially a big day as well for another Newcastle Fultons player, Mickey Young. Uh, it should be a pretty decent landmark if he is fit, if he is selected. Yeah, obviously he's on 199 appearances at the moment. If he can get to 200, it's a massive milestone for any player. 
Um, and from a personal point of view, it's an especially special one. I haven't known him since he was a kid growing up. I, my mum and, uh, and his mum used to coach the under eights together at West back in the day. So knowing the family growing up. Um, so yeah, really, really proud for him and, and what that will mean to his family if he hopefully does get that milestone. And we talked about big word fitness. How are the rest of the boys looking fitness-wise going into it? any headaches? I mean? Uh, no, we're good. Obviously, Tosti took a, um, a bang to his elbow in the last game, which is something that we've been looking after over the last few weeks. Um, a lot of the boys are fairly battered because of the, the length of the season we've had, so there's a few boys a little bit more modified through the week. Obviously, we, we liaise and dearly with, uh, with Reese from a medical point of view and Kev from an SNC point of view to make sure that our training sessions are appropriate for them to make sure that they get the work in, but they're also fresh for, fresh for the game. And that's no different to any time during the year, but obviously, this. This, uh, this has been a bit more heightened for me personally because I've, I've never necessarily had to deal with that before now. But, uh, but no, I think the boys, are, the boys have been well looked after um, and they're all excited to go. And just finally, because it's getting ball tickets starting to rain while this kids' festival's going on out in the pitch. Poor lads and lasses out there, they're going to get an absolute soak in a second, <laughs> guarantee. You mentioned that we are coming towards the end of the season now. Does it almost feel like, not light at the end of a tunnel, but there is that motivation of we've not got long left? It's a big final thing out there. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I think that's all, that's been the case already. Anyway, um, the the group we've got is so tight as a group. Um, they want to play for each other. You saw in the Rossley game how much they want to play for each other after Richard got sent off, um, and those sorts of things. I, I think we can't coach. That's that's down to them and their belief and their passion for for each other. And, um, and I think that's something that we've always had as a group in terms of when our backs against the wall, we'll come out fighting. I guess the challenge for us going forward and something we're starting to. I guess build into what we do now um, to hopefully lead it the next year is, is can we have that same attitude and, and motivation without it needing an external influencer if you like um, how can we start to drive that internally so we've done a bit of work with Andrew the mental skills coach on that this week trying to capture some of those inputs so we can start to behave that way a little bit more often